Chapter 27 The Land of Birthdays The children set off once again to the enchanted wood. They knew the way to the faraway tree very well by now. Wish, a wish, a wish, a whispered the trees as the children ran between them. Beth put her arms around one and pressed her left ear to the trunk. What secret are you saying today? she asked. We wish you a happy birthday, whispered the leaves. Beth laughed. It was fun to have a birthday. When they came to the faraway tree, how marvellous it looked. The folk of the tree had bedecked it with lots of lovely, brightly coloured flags because it was Beth's birthday. And it looked simply lovely. Oh, said Beth, pleased. I do feel happy. The only thing I wish is that I had proper party clothes on, not my old ones. But that couldn't be helped. They were just about to climb the tree when Dame Washlot's big washing basket came bumping down onto the end of Moonface's rope for the children to get into. There's a little picture on the last page. Just some buntings. Good, said Joe. Get in, girls. They all got in and went up to the tree at a tremendous rate. Moonface must have someone helping him to pull, said Joe, astonished. He had. Mr Whiskers was there. With what's-his-name and the old saucepan man. And they were pulling like anything. No wonder the basket shot up the tree. Many happy returns of the day, said everyone, kissing Beth. Oh, good. You're not in your best, clo best clothes, said Moonface. We wondered if you would make make it a fancy dress party, Beth. Oh, I'd love to, said Beth, but we haven't got any fancy dress. We can easily get that in the birthday land, said Silky, clapping hands for joy. Good, good, good. I do like fancy dress parties. Everybody's ready to go, said Moonface. The elves are just below us. Where's Saucepan, ma'am? Hey, Saucepan, where have you got to? He stepped into your slippery slip by mistake, said an elf appearing out of Moonface's house. He went down the slide with an awful noise. I expect he's at the bottom by now. Good gracious, just like silly old saucepan, said Moonface. We'd better let down a washing basket, or he'll never get up to us. So down went the washing basket again. The old saucepan got into it and came up with a clatter of saucepans and kettles. Now, are we really all ready, said Moonface? Silky, what's his name? Saucepan, the Angry Pixie, Dame Washalot, Mr. Whiskers, the Elves. Goodness, what a lovely lot of people are coming, said Beth. Seeing all the elves and the tree folk on the branches below. Is that Dame Washalot? What a nice old woman. Dame Washalot was beaming happily. For once, she was going to leave her wash tub. Going to the land of birthdays was not a treat to be missed. Come on then, said Moonface. And he led the way up the ladder. Up he went popped his head above to make quite sure that the land of birthdays was there, and then jumped straight into it. Everyone climbed up. That's all, I think, said Moonface, peering down. Oh, no, there's someone else. Who is it? I thought we were all here. Goodness, it's my clock, said Silky. The one I got in the land of take what you want. Sure enough, it was. Ding dong, ding dong, it cried ignorantly, as it climbed up on its flat feet. All right, all right, we'll wait for you, said Silky. Go carefully up the ladder. You weren't really asked, you know. I would love your clock to come to my party, said Beth at once. Come along, clock. Ding dong, said the clock, pleased. I managed to get up the ladder. The land of birthdays was simply beautiful. To begin with, there was always birthday weather there. Brilliant sunshine, blue sky and a nice little breeze. The trees were always green and there were... Always daisies and buttercups growing in the fields. Oh, it's lovely, it's lovely, cried Beth, dancing around joyfully. Moonface, what about our fancy dress? Where do we get that? Oh, you'll find everything in the house over there, said Moonface, pointing at a very pretty house. They all trooped over to it. As they went, small brown rabbits hopped out of holes, called a happy birthday to Beth, and popped back inside. It was all very exciting. Everyone crowded around the pretty house. It was full of cupboards 
and in the cupboards with the most thrilling costumes you can think of. Oh, look at this, cried Joan Delight, as he came across a sailor's outfit with a smart hat and blue, oh, that had blue, white and gold on it. Just like the captain of a ship. Just the right size for me. He put it on. Beth chose a dress, like a fairy's, and Franny chose a clown's costume and a pointed hat. She looked just like the real thing. Moonface dressed up as a pirate and Silky came as a daffodil. What's his name was a policeman. And as for the old saucepan man, he simply could not find a costume to fit him, because he was so bumpy with kettles and saucepans. There's a little picture. I assume that's silky. Oh, Beth, dressed as a fairy. Everyone else dressed up and, oh my, they did look convincing. Beth had wings with her dress, but she was disappointed because she couldn't fly with them. How she would love to spread her wings and fly, as the real fairies did. Now for balloons, said Silky, and she danced into the sunshine and ran to an old balloon seller who was sitting surrounded by a great cloud of coloured balloons. Everybody chose one, and what games they had. Suddenly a bell rang and Moonface gave a shout of joy. Birthday feast, come on everyone. He rushed to a long table set out in the field. Beth ran with the others and took her place at the head of the table. But to her great surprise and disappointment, there was no food on the table at all. Just empty plates, cups and glasses. Don't look upset, whispered Silky. You gotta wish your own birthday feast. Beth gave a squeak. Wish her own birthday feast? Oh, that would be the best fun in the world. Don't wish for bread and butter, called Moonface. Wish for an ice cream sundae. I like those. I wish for an ice cream sundae, said Beth at once, and immediately the biggest, tallest sundae you had ever saw appeared on one of the empty plates. Moonface helped himself. Wish for strawberries and vanilla ice cream, cried Fanny, who simply loved that. I wish for strawberries and vanilla ice cream, said Beth. An enormous dish of strawberries appeared, with a large tub of vanilla ice cream beside it. And I wish for chocolate cake too, and lemonade, and, and fruit salad, yelled somebody. Donuts, cried what's-his-name. Cheese sandwiches, begged Mr Whiskers. Ding dong, ding dong, said Silky's clock in the greatest excitement. Everybody laughed. Don't wish for ding dong, said Joe. We've got plenty of those as long as Silky's clock is here. The clock chimed fourteen without stopping. It wandered about, looking as happy as could be. Everyone began to eat. My goodness. It was a wonderful feast, the strawberries and vanilla ice cream, and the sundae went almost at once, for Mr Whiskers and fifty elves decided they liked those very much too, so Beth had to wish for more. What about my birthday cake? she asked Silky. Do I wish for that too? No, it just comes, said Silky. It will appear right in the middle of the table, just you watch. Beth watched. There was a wonderful silver dish in the middle of the table. Something seemed to be forming there. A curious sort of mist hung over it. The birthday cake is coming, shouted Joe, and everyone watched the silver dish. Gradually a great cake shape it, it's no oh, gradually a great cake shaped itself there. Oh, a wonderful cake with red, pink, white and yellow decorations made from sugar and shaped with little flowers. On top were eight candles burning, for Beth was eight that day. Her name was written in big sugar letters on top. Beth, a very happy birthday. Beth felt very proud. She had to cut the cake, of course. It was quite a difficult job, for there were so many people to cut a slice of cake. This is a wishing cake, said Moonface. When everyone had a piece on the plate. So wish, wish, wish when you eat it, and your wish will come true. The children stared at him in delight. What would they wish? Franny was just holding her cake in her hand, thinking of a wish, when the old saucepan man 
upset everything. What do you think he did? The next chapter is chapter 28. The Little Lost Island. That's for another day.